People say education in Finland is successful due to their small homogeneous population, making it incommensurable with the United States. But when we look at the approaches to education reform both these countries have adopted, some pretty interesting differences have occurred. If we begin in the 1950s, we find two countries situated in very different post-World War II economies. Despite a post-war economic boom, the number of students in the U.S. graduating from high school was less than 40%. As the decade went on, that number continued to rise, and due to the first major civil rights victories in the Supreme Court, the population began to slowly diversify. The Soviets' successful launch of the first satellite in space during the heart of the Cold War was a catalyst for education reform. President Eisenhower labeled it a crisis and passed the National Defense Education Act in response, a four-year multi-billion dollar investment in reaction to the belief that as a nation, we were falling behind. Finland, who had just lost a tenth of its territory in World War II and had a mostly agrarian, unschooled population, saw less than 10% of students continuing past primary schooling and even fewer continuing into upper secondary school. As the economy began to industrialize, the number rose, but only to just short of 40%. As industry grew in Finland, the Finns recognized the need for a skilled labor force. In 1958, the Act on Vocational Schools was passed, and a network of vocational schools was formed alongside the traditional institutions. The previously undeveloped education system was reorganized to create a stable economy. In the 1960s, the United States saw its longest period of economic expansion in history, while the Civil Rights Movement continued to make progress. As more students entered the classrooms, however, a shortage of teachers and schools occurred, and a growing gap in wealth began to manifest in educational outcomes. As a result, several pieces of legislation were passed in an attempt to level the playing field for disadvantaged students. Most notable of these was the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, instituted as part of Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty, including programs for vocational training and extra support services for underprivileged students. Achievement in Finland in the 1960s was uneven, and not all students had equal access to quality schooling. In 1968, Finnish Parliament enacted legislation to create a new basic education system that was built around the development of a common, compulsory, comprehensive school for grades 1 through 9, including dramatic changes in teacher preparation and certification requirements, a broad yet mandatory national curriculum, and free meals and school materials for all students. Finland was paving the way for a steady course of reform that would last the next 30 years. The 1970s saw a great deal of effort expended on making schools equal for all students in the United States, regardless of socioeconomic background, native language, sex, or ability. This was accomplished through legislation such as the Equal Educational Opportunities Act. But some argued that the attention being paid to social equality was attention that was being drained from a focus on academics. Some wealthier families pulled their children from public schools and sent them to private schools. In the meantime, teachers were becoming more vocal in support of their students, while unions rallied in support of Jimmy Carter and more federal oversight of public education. At the national level, Finland's constitution guarantees equal opportunities in education irrespective of sex, social status, or ethnic group. Between 1972 and 77, Finland continued to implement its comprehensive school reform based on these principles. Responsibility for basic education was given almost exclusively to local municipalities. Schools continued to follow the national accepted curriculum, while local providers of education were given more and more opportunities to decide on how to organize teaching. In the 1980s, schools came under public scrutiny. Focus shifted from equality to excellence to compete in a business-driven global economy. The Department of Education was created to coordinate federal assistance, collect data, and enforce federal laws. After a shift in political party control, the department created the National Commission on Excellence in Education, who in 1983 presented a report entitled The Nation at Risk to then-President Ronald Reagan. The report declared that America was experiencing a learning crisis, and new regulations were put into effect that demanded accountability. Rising test scores were tied to federal aid, and high-stakes testing took center stage. In the mid-1980s, Finland reformed the national core curriculum with classroom teacher and university-level input. 
As a result of the Comprehensive School Act, ability grouping was discontinued and the traditional structure of upper secondary schools became more flexible, making room for more choice within the system. This effort continued paving the way for the vocational education programs in Finland today. Enrollment in secondary education continued to rise. The U.S. trend to shift focus from educational inputs to educational outcomes continued in the 90s. Reform efforts focused on standards, assessment, and accountability in an effort to remain internationally competitive. Large-scale standardized assessments were used to collect data at the school, district, and state level, while emerging charter schools and voucher programs attempted to provide choice to individual students. In 1994, Congress passed Goals 2000, which set a series of goals to be attained by the new millennium, including a 90% graduation rate, a 100% adult literacy rate, and that the U.S. be first in the world in math and science. None were accomplished. In 1997, Education Week released a report claiming that despite 15 years of reform efforts, little progress had been made. In the early 90s, Finland experienced a major economic recession and was forced to move away from reliance on traditional industry. In 1995, Finland joined the European Union and made a conscious effort to transform its economy to one that relied on information and knowledge. This heavily influenced education as emphasis was placed on creating a workforce capable of innovation, open-mindedness, and flexibility. Focus was put on students developing a sense of responsibility for their education which was supported by the multiple pathways in secondary schools which honored student choice. As the decade progressed, greater local autonomy and flexibility was granted to municipalities. At the turn of the century, an act of Congress entitled No Child Left Behind reauthorized ESEA and made standards and test-based accountability law, expanding the federal role in education and formally equating excellence with good test scores. The act focused on increased accountability, which meant mandated standardized testing for all public schools that received federal funds. This further shifted school focus to the core academic subjects in order to achieve the act's goal, requiring that 100% of students reach the same state standards in reading and math by 2014. Although designed to close the opportunity gap in the United States and make our students more globally competitive, Critics argued that the goal was unattainable and led to a narrowing of curriculum and a focus on teaching to the test. In 2002, the Bilingual Education Act was renamed the English Language Acquisition Act, cutting funding per English language learner by 60% and funding for professional development for teachers in half. Whereas No Child Left Behind was mandated, its successor, the current Race to the Top initiative, is incentives-based. Under Race to the Top, states are awarded funding based on their implementation of performance-based standards for teachers and administrators, adoption of national teaching standards, and promoting charter schools and privatization of education. District-level evaluation systems are mandated that differentiate teachers and principals by effectiveness. The Common Core state standards are nationally adopted, evidence-based standards with the goal of ensuring that students graduate college and career ready. 90% of states have adopted the Common Core in order to be eligible for federal Race to the Top funding. However, several states are reconsidering their position to implement them. In the 21st century, Finland has continued to sustain autonomy at the municipality level, and most of the basic values and visions of Finnish education policy have remained constant since the 1960s. Finland's immigrant population is on the rise. By 2020, a fifth of Helsinki students are expected to be foreign-born. While some Finns view this as a plight, others see opportunity and extra funding is given to schools in relatively poor areas with disproportionately high numbers of students with special needs. Economic policies focused on exports and innovation drive the desire for a well-educated, skilled population. To achieve this, teachers are trained to create learner-centered classrooms and continually be reflective about their practice. Teachers decide how they will teach and what they will select from the national curriculum. Because there are no externally mandated standardized tests as students progress through primary and secondary schools, teachers are trained in both diagnostic and formative assessment. Teachers are selected from top performing students in upper secondary schools, so communities put a great deal of trust in their expertise. 
Students take center stage in Finland schools. The system is built around student choice and students receive hot meals, health care and school supplies from the school at no cost. The current revisions to the national curriculum include a push to include more arts and physical education in schools, as well as a focus on citizen skills, including thinking skills, ways of working and interaction, participation and initiative, and self-awareness and personal responsibility. Over six decades of education reform in both countries, the homogeneity in Finland certainly plays a role in the different trajectories, but a closer look reveals that there is more at play. Education is an unbelievably complicated process that does not happen in a vacuum. Culture shapes and dictates the face of education at every moment in every classroom. In the United States, societal conflict and change manifested in the schools, creating challenges in the U.S. that have occurred at microscopic levels in Finland. But in the United States, too often, private interests and social and political ambitions dictate much of what happens in education reform. Both countries have had their shares of successes and struggles. While the face of American education is constantly shifting from one reform movement to the next, Finland values stability and does not allow central government initiatives to be pushed through the education system, and this factor has played a large role in their educational success.